The last few months have been a very heavy line. My wife, Catherine, was having an affair with a co-worker, and it seemed like everyone in the world knew about it, but no one had the courage to say anything. I was just as guilty as everyone else. For some strange reason, I was hoping it would just end, and that would be it. Will returned to normal. Of course it was a fantasy, because you can't go back to the way things were. We were married for 19 years and had three children. Rob was 18 and the eldest. Catherine was pregnant when we got married. A year later, we had Donna, and the next year Darcy came along and I had a vasectomy. They were good guys, and until recently, we didn't have any problems with them. Needless to say, the problem with the children was caused by their mother's sloppy activities. For the past three years, Catherine has worked in the claims department of a large insurance company. When she started working overtime, several evenings a week, the kids and I quickly noticed. She got a new hairstyle and went to the gym. Her underwear drawer became a little sexier, but I never really enjoyed it. Donna and Darcy saw her having lunch with her department head at a prestigious restaurant, but she never mentioned it. In desperation, I decided to follow her like a love-struck puppy. Her trips to motels with her lover were frequent and brazen. Although I did not see the need for this, I still also documented the times and dates of several of their meetings. As the affair dragged on, the family began to fall apart. All this happened without any conversation. The children were angry with their mother for deceiving her. The children were angry at me because I did not confront their mother and tried to control myself. I was too stupid to understand that waiting was hopeless, no. The family only gathered for dinner. Even then, it was harder bad test. There was practically no talking, and when each of the children finished eating, they quietly disappeared, usually leaving the house before bed. John, I'm not going to tolerate this attitude from children for long. If you don't do something to fix it, I will. I will take care of it. You've been saying this for a month now. I don't know what came over them. Why did they suddenly start acting like little children? Oh, that's no problem. The problem was how everything settled. I think we're done now. It will work out. Are you going to let me in on this, or is this some kind of big deal? My secret? No secret. Tomorrow, I'm moving in with my parents. Catherine was not happy about this news. She stopped clearing the table and sat back down with a strong, decisive slap. Oh, what am that mouth? Are you talking, John? You can't commute from Freckville, and I can't take care of this place and the kids on my own. How can this solve anything? On the very part, Ketrin, you don't come. I don't want to worry about the children. They will come with me. I didn't expect to see frowning eyebrows and a stiff lower lip, but in fact this could have been expected. With her elbows on the table, my loving wife leaned forward and looked into my eyes. There is no way in the world you will leave this house with my children. What makes you think you can do it? Can you get away with such stupidity? We decided so. Catherine sighed irritably, stood up, and began clearing the table again. She muttered something under her breath, but I couldn't make out anything. Throwing the last of the china into the sink, she turned around. Why? Why is this happening? I think the reason is that they are tired of being embarrassed. Oh, what that mouth? Are you talking? This mainly concerns your affair with Brian Masterson. You flaunt your infidelity to such an extent that the whole family knows about it. You showed no respect to your children or to me. What? Are you going to deny it? Are you telling me you don't spend several days a week having sex in different motels? Are you saying that I don't understand this? I decided I didn't want to continue this conversation anymore. There were a lot of things I could have thrown at her, but I didn't have the courage. I pushed back my chair and left the room. Catherine stood at the sink with her hand on her hip. I noticed a defiant expression on her face, as if she was pleased that I mentioned her infidelity. I got the feeling that she was everything this time. She teased me to have a reason to stop carrying around feelings of guilt. There was a lecture expected, which I had no intention of hearing this evening. I didn't have the slightest desire to hear that I forced her to seek solace elsewhere because I was a mediocre husband and a bad lover. Of course I could tell her that. This doesn't give her the right to cheat on me. But in the end, I'm everything. I'll be there anyway. Guilty. I knew Catherine and I knew that she planned everything in advance about what I was going to say. My best game was to not play at all. 
What about your job? I'm leaving. I heard her shout out my name as I walked out the door. I had no idea where the children were. All of their clothing and personal belongings were loaded into Rob's Subaru Outback. The van had traveled over a hundred thousand miles, but I figured it wasn't me of resources left for a hundred thousand. All my clothes and personal papers were in the back seat of the Jeep. Returning home, Catherine did not notice any of this. We all agreed that whatever we couldn't carry on the first trip, we could come back later. I was sure that Catherine was inspecting the house when I left. There was no turning back at this point. I decided I should call Donna. Donna always controlled herself. Rob was the oldest and the man, but he had no problem letting Donna call the shots. Donna, this is Dad. Are you still at home? No, I'm on my way to the motel now. I think it will be better if you guys find some place to stay for the night. Can you contact Rob? No problem. Darcy and I will stay with Betsy Cooper. I don't know what Rob is up to, but I think I can contact him. Okay, meet me tomorrow at 6 o'clock at the Waffle House on Lancaster Pike. From there, we can head to Frackville. Dad, was Mom angry? I think yes. I'll tell you about it tomorrow. Oh, after you call Rob, maybe it would be better to turn off your phone. After checking into the Desca Motel, I turned off my cell phone. I had just finished taking a shower when there was a knock on the door. I opened it, expecting to see an angry Catherine, but instead saw Rob smiling. There weren't many motels in the city. By seven o'clock the next morning, we were already on our way to the coal regions. Catherine and I never got around to discussing my work situation. It didn't matter because I was now unemployed. The most normal thing to do in such conditions is to quietly hide as much cash as possible. If I were to file for divorce, I would have to go through the process of declaring assets and coming up with an equitable distribution. I decided what to do with everything in my mouth. Nobody likes to see their credit go belly up, but under the circumstances, it seemed like a good idea to me. If I don't work, the kids can qualify for a lot of grants and other benefits when I do. It's time to go to college. I want to make sure they get everything they need, but it may not work out. Living with my parents will also cover many other normal expenses. I was pretty sure that Catherine wouldn't wait long to file for divorce. I'll probably agree to anything she will demand just to get rid of this marriage. She couldn't get much since I didn't have a job, and the kids wouldn't go with her even if they were ordered to. All, all I could do now was sit and wait. It was great to be back in my hometown. The last time I lived there was before I left for college. After graduating, the closest place I could get half a decent job was in reading. Catherine was originally from Baltimore, so she didn't mind being just a few hours away from home. We got married before my last semester at Penn State. Catherine never finished due to pregnancy. She has never had the desire to study. I think she came to leave her parents and find a husband. One way or another, I won the marriage lottery. My prize was three wonderful children and a bitch for a wife. Of course I had regrets, but I'm not one of those who lived past. I didn't know what was mine. The past will catch up with me so quickly. Since I had many old friends in the area, getting a job was... It wasn't so difficult for him. I hid as much money as possible so that it wouldn't fall into Catherine's hands. She has nothing that will happen until she starts getting divorced. All three guys also left. Under the circumstances, I think they felt obligated. I didn't leave Catherine because the kids wanted me to, but they seemed to feel the same way. Mom and Dad were reluctant to take money from us. I don't think they needed it. They didn't want me to feel like a slacker. Catherine called two weeks later and asked if I was going to pay the mortgage. I answered no. Two weeks later, she called me and said that her car insurance needs updating. I gave her the same answer. Catherine tried to start a conversation related to cheating. She tried to be apologetic and sincere, but she succeeded. I listened patiently as she explained how her friendship with Masterson developed into a full-fledged sexual relationship. She assured me that he was just a physical attraction and nothing more. After a few minutes, she realized how ridiculous everything was and fell silent mid-sentence. I didn't answer. I'm really sorry, John. I don't have a good excuse for what I did. I'm truly sorry. After that, she stopped calling. I guess my wife finally realized that the marriage was impossible to save and filed for divorce. She had a mortgage and a car to pay, as well as all utilities. 
Of course, I was obligated to pay these bills, but I felt that since thousands of other fatally beaten fathers avoided similar things, I could too. It was worth the risk. I signed the papers and power of attorney to sell the house as soon as I received them. Now it was only a matter of time. Catherine asked for nothing more than a home. After closing costs and commissions, she won't get much. Rob was getting all his college papers ready. Unfortunately, Rob had other pressing issues. My, the past is coming back to haunt me, and Rob is at the center of the problem. Dad, I have a little problem. I suppose you think I can help you? A few weeks ago, I met a girl and I really like her. At least the conversation started on a high note. Rob dated several girls in high school, but was never serious about them. It was nice to hear him admit that he could have a potentially long-term relationship. I'm sure it's not about pollination methods. No, but I received an unexpected blow. I first met her mother, and as soon as I introduced myself, she got upset. When I'm gone, she told Shannon that she didn't want to see me anymore. She had never done this with any of Shannon's previous boyfriends. Her mother gave her no explanation. I think Shannon was a little mad at her mom because she finally agreed to back off, but only if you talk to her. Let me clarify. This girl's mother will allow you to date, but only if she talks to me first. That's all and that's it. Shannon said nothing like this had ever happened before. I think I'll find time. You are everything. Arrange it and let me know where and when. Rob left the room with a big smile, and I sat and thought about why this woman should meet me before approving their relationship. In the evening, Rob answered from us to Shannon. It was an old house located next to the main street. The house was badly in need of painting, and the slate sidewalk should have been leveled long ago. Shannon waited at the front door and opened it anxiously when we arrived. Hello, I'm Shannon. She was cheerful and sweet. I understood why Rob was so attracted to her. We are very grateful to you, Mr. Rachel. I'm very sorry that I have to invite you like this, but Mom insisted. I hope you don't mind. Do not worry about it. I'm sure we can do anything to settle as soon as possible. Mother, Mr. Rachel is here. My heart sank when my old high school college sweetheart, Abigail Connor, walked into the room. Hello, John. Hello, Abby. The words came out of my lips automatically. There was an awkward silence in the room, which Rob quickly broke. Do you guys know each other? She didn't take her eyes off me. Your father and I went to school together. Shannon seemed happy about the new situation. Well, that should make things easier, right? I have a fresh pot of coffee ready. I think we'll be more comfortable in the kitchen. I obediently followed her to the back of the house. When I sat down, she turned to the children. You two better wait in the living room for a while. Turn on the TV and don't be a fool. I'll call you in a few minutes. Abby went to get coffee, and I began to reminisce. We were in the fall semester of our senior year at the University of Pennsylvania. Abby and I had a fight because I didn't want to go home for Thanksgiving. She left without me. Bye, no. I was having fun, got drunk, and was arrested for hooliganism. My parents were unhappy and Abby refused to talk to me when she returned. She's still mad at me when the semester ended and she went home alone for Christmas. My parents were unhappy with me, so I stayed on campus for the holidays. That's when the bad news came. It was between Christmas and New Year when Catherine approached me at the student union. According to her, during one of my drunken nights in the student dormitory we had sex and now she was pregnant. I didn't want to aggravate the situation with my parents. Without thinking too much, we drove to Gretna Green that same day and got married. I told my parents only in the spring, after finishing school. Abby found out about the marriage when she returned to school after several years of studying and immediately dropped out. I don't know if she ever finished. You're daydreaming. Her words woke me up when a mug appeared in front of me. She was 20 years older than when I saw her for the last time, and that's why it was more beautiful. My brain was racing feverishly, making comparisons. I'm really sorry. I wasn't ready for this. I'll come to you. I'm trying to let my brain come to its senses before I become worth anything. Abby was always easy to talk to, and I always felt comfortable with her. I don't even remember what we argued about before we broke up. It was at that moment that I realized that I didn't even know her surnames. 
Rob never mentioned Shannon's last name. It's time to melt the lead. I tried to be calm and at the same time open. Is Mr. Abby here or we'll only discuss this twice? She didn't smile at my pathetic attempt at humor. That's why I invited you. I'm not looking for anything, but I hope we can avoid problems. What do you mean you're not looking for anything? John, I've never been married. I tried dating several guys, but nothing worked out. Most of them were not interested in an unmarried mother and were simply looking for good sex without any conditions. I'm done more. I don't understand. That's it, John. You are Shannon's father. Well, I said it. I was hoping I could tell you in a more sophisticated way this way, but sometimes everything. It's not go the way we plan. Of course, I had no idea. Can I have some more? Coffee? And that's all? And that's all? What can you say? I think I understand why you told them they couldn't date anymore. Unfortunately, I think it was already too late. By the time I found out that Rob was your son, they had already created their relationship. Oh my God, you say my son and my daughter are having sex. I'm absolutely sure. I think that brothers and sisters should not love each other physically. The fresh coffee was too hot to drink. I blew on the cup and my daughter's mother stared at me, waiting for some words of wisdom that I didn't have. Abby, I don't think we have a choice, do we? We have to tell them and hope that it's not too late. There was a sudden change of mood at the table. I'm very sorry, John. I should have told you, but I just couldn't bring myself to do it. You just got married, and I didn't want to ruin your life. So you decided to ruin your own life instead. I have a beautiful, smart daughter. I didn't ruin my life. I just needed to make some adjustments. I finished my coffee and leaned back in my chair. By the way, John, I don't want to seem nosy, but where is Catherine? I'm afraid we've grown apart. I always thought it was a good word, but I never thought I would have a chance to use it. Oh, sorry for asking. We sat in silence for a few moments. John, will you tell them yourself, or should I do it? You go forward, and I will support you as much as I can. Not even a minute later, Shannon and Rob were sitting with us at the kitchen table. Abby handed Shannon a folded piece of paper. Oh my God! Shannon immediately caught Rob's attention, and yet she didn't even unfold the paper. What's happening? It's a mysterious birth certificate that I wasn't supposed to see until I was 21. Rob looked puzzled. What, what, what's so unusual about a birth certificate? Shannon didn't answer. She unfolded the form and stared at him with her mouth open. There must be a mistake here. Mom, tell me it's not true. Abby didn't answer her daughter. She stared at the floor. Rob tried to look at the paper, but Shannon hid it. Please, Mom, tell me it's not true. There was still no answer. Disgusted, Shannon threw the birth certificate across the table and ran out of the room, crying. Dad, what, what, what's going on? I'm really sorry, Rob. It was difficult for us to tell you this, but you should have known. Know that? Chert, take it. Shannon is your sister. Silence reigned in the kitchen. In the distance, somewhere in the house, we heard Shannon crying. Rob slowly stood up and left the room. I was sure he had a million questions, but right now he wasn't looking for answers. He had more important things to do. After a few moments, the sobs became less intense. Abby, do you happen to have any beer? Abby and I were just finishing our second beer when Rob showed up. Can we go home now, Dad? Two days later, Rob decided to talk to me again. The house was gloomy and I felt relieved that something was going to be resolved. I want to do a DNA test. I have the money to pay for it and I won't take no for an answer. Where do we do this? There is a laboratory in Allentown. $200 for each test. I want to check on Shannon, you and myself. Well, if we're going to go through such trouble, we should check the girls too. I'll pay. Do we need to travel there or will they mail us the testing material? You can do it this way or that, but I would prefer to go there. Wonderful. You are everything. Arrange it and we'll make a whole day out of it. I'll even stop by Olive Garden for dinner. That same day, I called the Continental Fire and Flood Control Authority. I spoke with the head of the company's legal department. He wasn't really interested in my marital status, 
and he quickly told me this, but he was interested in how Brian Masterson paid for the motel rooms he used. When I mentioned that Masterson was Catherine's boss and that I needed more information about the company's adultery policy, he quickly ended the conversation. A few days later, Catherine called. For some strange reason, she had lost her job and was now struggling to pay her bills. She seemed upset when I told her that I couldn't find a job and that I was caring for my parents. She wanted me to give her enough money so she could move back to Baltimore. She put the house up for sale, but things weren't going well. She hoped to get out of Pennsylvania before the car would be taken away. She again tried to explain her connection to Masterson, but quickly abandoned the attempt when I did not answer. Although she didn't mention it, I knew that Brian Masterson had also been fired. She still didn't understand what happened. In two days, everything has changed. I'm talking home and found Rob and Shannon on the sofa, smiling like two Cheshire cats. They just sat there with stupid grins on their faces. Cool. In what business? Why such long faces? It was a weak attempt at a joke. They all laughed anyway. Do you want good news or not so good? Aren't you mistaken? Don't think. Well, maybe a little bad news, but overall, everything is pretty good. Stop making fun of me. Donna and Darcy are your daughters. The DNA matched. I assume they're happy about that? They still don't know. What else? Shannon is your daughter. More one almost perfect match. I'm a little confused. Where does the good, the good part of all this come from? Don't worry now, but I'm not your son. I didn't expect this. I loved Rob with all my heart and raised him like any good father. Now he tells me that I am not his father. I need more beer. The smiles disappeared from Rob and Shannon's faces. All of a sudden it became a little more serious and a little less carefree. I returned with a new bottle and plopped down in a chair. Dad, this doesn't change anything between us. You are my father, no matter what the DNA says. I don't know who the sperm donor was, but you will always be my father. I finished half the new bottle. I don't know whether to be happy or sad. I don't know if this is good news or bad. I do not know what to do. I just don't know what to do. My new daughter and my ex-son were just sitting on the couch not saying anything. Have you told your mother yet, Shannon? No. Why don't you guys run and tell her the news? I have a lot to think about. Mom and Dad were in the kitchen, trying to escape this whole situation. They were always very delicate. John, if there is anything we can do, please let us know. We won't give advice, but we are more than willing to help in any other way. Dad was always next to me. I wish I could be the same for Rob. Abby found me a few hours later at the Circle Bar. I don't know how she knew I was there, and I don't remember getting drunk. Looking back, I don't know why I got drunk. All it wasn't that bad, just everything got mixed up. It had been ten years since I last drank too much, and I didn't have a good excuse for it. I woke up on the couch at Abby's house. Anyway, she took me there. I was dressed, but took off his shoes. I smelled fresh coffee but the toilet was more important. She was waiting at the kitchen table when I returned from the bathroom. The bathrooms in these old houses were always on the second floor, so I was forced to attack the stairs to use them. I won this battle, albeit barely. Abby didn't offer me anything other than coffee, which was fine under the circumstances. I really ruined everything. I don't know who to apologize to first. Looks like you weren't the only one who had sex with Catherine that weekend. You just drew the short straw. That mouth, I don't even remember having sex with her. It was with her words I had no alibi or way to prove that I didn't sleep with her. I chose the best, the easy way, like a moron. Chert, I must be the biggest idiot in the world. There was no answer from the other end of the table. Finally, she spoke. Hey, don't look at me. I completely agree with your self-assessment. I do not know what to do. I thought the divorce had already begun. Yes, but I feel like I should do something else. I think you should take a shower and shave now. I was in a really bad place and felt like crap. Can you give me a ride home? Over the next few days, Rob was in high spirits. The girls seemed happy with the genetic test, 
but could not come to terms with their mother. My mom and dad supported me as much as possible, without going too deep into things they shouldn't. This was greatly appreciated. Rob decided he needed to take action. Dad, I want to know. You Ocham? She should know, Dad. Mom needs to know who my real father is. It was in a college dorm, right? This means that Mom got pregnant from one of your brothers and you took the blame on yourself. Is there any way to make her tell you names? Wow, you assume there was more than one. You don't seem to think very highly of your mother. Not after what she did to you then and what she's doing now. She was a slob and remains. I still have it to this day. How? Why take it? Have you been with her all these years? I ignored the last question. I have an idea. I don't know if it will work, but it's worth a try. That same day I called my loving wife. I tried to mentally organize what I wanted to say, but I was afraid that in the end I would get confused and that would be it. I'll ruin it. John, how can I help you? I didn't expect the call. Judging by her tone of voice, I was afraid that she would think this call was an attempt at reconciliation. Come to me. You have to be very careful not to introduce it misleadingly. I was thinking about our last conversation. You mentioned something about wanting to move in with your sister. This is what you still are. Want? Yes. Have you figured out how to help me? I would be very grateful. I can give you $2,000 to help, but in return I need a couple of things. Okay, this will really help. What do you need? I don't think you know what I'm doing. DNA analysis of all children. Oh, what? From her, it came out in a muffled burst that she had no idea about the tests. I'm really sorry, John. I hoped this would never come up. It seemed like everything was between you and Rob. It was so good. I found it interesting that she mentioned Rob, but not Darcy or Donna. What about girls? I don't understand what you're talking about, John. What girls? Weren't you worried about their DNA tests? No. Why? Her answer seemed sincere to me, and I decided not to pursue this topic further. I would like to know the name or names of who Rob's father is. Tell me and you'll get $2,000. The pause on the other end of the line was much longer than I expected. Catherine, whoever this guy is, he doesn't think highly enough of you to make you an honest woman. Why do you think it needs to be protected? He used you and dumped you on me. It's me who needs care, not him. Okay, fine. There were three of them. I don't know which one is the father. Names? Kyle Simmons, Ray Thorinson, and Philip Berger. I knew them all. Three spoiled rich kids who thought they could get away with anything. They were all fraternity brothers who turned out to be less than loyal. Thank you, Catherine. I appreciate it. And also, what do you need, John? If you're not going to stay in the house and you can't sell it, can I take it? Oh, God, yes. I can't sell it, and I would like more than anything to give it to you. Even if I find a buyer, I won't get enough from the deal to pay the real estate commission. You'll get it as soon as I move out. I will sign all the papers. John, I also have a small favor to ask. What exactly, Catherine? Can you somehow arrange for the children and I to meet? Nothing special, but I'm their mother nonetheless, and I'd really like to see them sometimes. I'm sure I can arrange something. Two days later, Catherine received her $2,000, and I received the title to the house and the mortgage. Rob learned from me about possible sperm donors. The DNA information was a little more complicated, but not impossible. Ray Thorinson was a high school teacher in Altoona. All government employees were required to have their DNA on file. These files were not available to the general public, but Rob had no trouble figuring out how to get what he needed. Ray Thorinson was not Rob's father. Philip Berger was a guest of the Ohio State Penitentiary. Phil seemed to like young girls. Girls who, according to the state, should not sleep with men old enough to be their fathers. It's not for me to judge but I was glad that Philip's whereabouts were known. Of course, all the data on Philip is in the database. I don't know how Rob got access to this, but it ultimately turned out that Phil was not Rob's father. If Catherine was being honest with me, that meant Kyle Simmons had to be the one. The search continued. Seymour Schlump and I went to high school together. 
Seymour attended Dickerson and received his law degree when I went to the University of Pennsylvania. Seymour and the law were not a match made in heaven. He wasn't the straightest arrow in the quiver. In fact, he was mean, to say the least. However, he was the ideal candidate for our project. Using Nittany Lions alumni news and fraternity web pages, we located Lit Cole Simmons at Andrews Air Force Base in Maryland. Kyle was a big shot in ROTC in college, and it turns out he made a career out of it. Abby had a cousin in the Pennsylvania National Guard who was able to obtain Kyle's DNA record. All confirmed. By the end of the week, Catherine was no longer home. Instead of making mortgage payments, I simply refinanced everything, removing Catherine's name from all documents. I returned to the house, but the children wanted to stay in Frackville for the rest of the school year. Rob wanted to stay to be close to Shannon. I think I wanted to be there for Abby, but there were issues that needed to be resolved. I was amazed at the poor performance of Catherine's lawyer. It would be very easy for him to determine that I did not quit my job, but simply took a vacation. It turned out that he never checked. I got the impression that he filled out a divorce form that he downloaded from the internet. There was still time before the final decision a few months, but I didn't expect any problems. The worst thing about me going back to work is that Rob will lose his grants. The good part was that I would be able to pay my tuition or get a loan. Abby worked in an office that paid doctors. It was a nine-to-five job, five days a week. I started spending all my weekends in Frackville. Rob and Shannon got along great, with one small flaw. Shannon spent a lot of time with Darcy and Donna. It was mostly shopping, but Rob wasn't too keen on sharing it. Abby and I thought it was funny, in a good way. For some reason, Abby and I acted more like friends than ex-lovers. It seemed like neither of us was ready to take the first step towards intimacy. Seymour flooded the legal system with every piece of paper he could think of. It worked on the principle of a shotgun. He figured that if he filed enough cases against Simmons, one or two of them might stick around. He also hoped to get at least one partial confession so he could get money from Kyle. I didn't pay him a cent, but he didn't seem to mind. I didn't want anything from lawsuits, but it would be nice if we could pay for Rob's college. It will be easier this way when the girls start studying. Everything between Rob and me remained the same. The DNA story didn't seem to bother either of us. Rob was just happy he wasn't Shannon's brother. I was glad that I was a father, but I was sorry that when she was growing up, I was not around. She seemed happy with everything. All started to return to normal. I settled everything with the house, but did not want to live alone. Rob and Shannon had finished school and were both working. In two months, Rob will be leaving for State College. Shannon was about to begin a two-year program at Reading Area Community College in some area of medical administration. Catherine called from Baltimore. Relationship between her and her parents didn't go very well. She lived with her sister and could not afford to get her own home. She has had problems getting a job due to bad recommendations from the last employer. She regretted everything and regretted that she could not turn everything around back. She hoped that I could forgive her. Although forgiveness on my part was out of the question, she was glad to hear that the girls were planning a trip to Baltimore to see her. The conversation ended on a high note. By the end of the summer, my life began to improve. The divorce was final and there were no conditions. Kyle Simmons acknowledged Rob's paternity on the advice of his lawyer. Instead of a cash settlement, it was agreed that Kyle would pay all of Rob's college expenses within four years. Kyle also paid Seymour's fees. What else worse for Kyle, his wife filed for divorce, which included her entitled to 49% of Kyle's upcoming pension. Using simple math, she determined that Rob was conceived just four weeks before their wedding. Coupled with several other indiscretions over the years, this proved to be the straw that broke the camel's back. The biggest surprise was Abby's appearance. It was too late for dinner, but quite okay for a bottle of wine. She didn't say anything until we got comfortable. John, I need a favor. I liked the way she started the conversation because I felt obligated to her and wanted to do something for her. Shannon starts classes at Arik in a few weeks, and I'm not thrilled with her. Trips, especially in winter through the mountains. I wanted to ask, is it okay if she stays here with you? Well, of course, 
The girls are coming back, and I think they'll all get along great. Is there one more problem? We've never been apart before, and I'm hesitant to leave her one. She won't be alone. I'll be here, and the girls will too. According to her face, I realized that I had said something wrong. I'm so sorry, Abby. This was probably the wrong answer. I see that you were expecting something different. Please explain. I swear, John Richel, you are the dumbest person I know. I won't let you off the hook again. I'll sit here until you figure it out, so give me more guilt. Well, it took me a full five seconds to realize what was going on. Before I finished pouring her wine, I was grinning from ear to ear. Well, that's it. It turned out as it should. Rob is doing well at the University of Pennsylvania and returns home every chance he gets. Shannon has excellent grades in RACC and will graduate six months early. Donna was accepted to James Madison University in Virginia with a good scholarship. Darcy is still undecided on college. Abby, Mrs. Richell, has a nice little medical practice covering three counties. She hopes Shannon will be willing to step in for her. When will the Rebbe be born? Knock, as the famous English writer says, life goes on. The husband knows about his wife's infidelity, but for a long time he turns a blind eye to it. He gives up, files for divorce, takes his three children, and leaves to live with his parents. His wife tries to resist, but eventually retreats. His son meets a girl, but after learning his last name, her mother forbids them to meet until she talks to his father. In the conversation, he learns that he is the girl's father. His son decides to do a DNA test. His father decides to test all four children. Everyone turns out to be his except the son. They find his real father, he pays for his tuition. His ex-wife sells him their house, and they all move there, along with his son's girlfriend and her mother. 5-5. Five, five. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you, and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.